Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a fix to a problem that I hear about all the time during my private one-on-one -on -one Zoom coaching sessions with students that are new to Studio One. They have a problem when they're trying to record onto a track for the first time. They're not sure how to set the levels. They're not sure why they don't see signal on the track. And I'm just gonna show you a couple little tips to help you avoid the frustration. So for more tips like these, I want you to make sure you check out my pre-Sonus Studio One Beginner's Guide over at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And while you're at homerecordingmadeeasy.com, I wanna give you a free mixing course worth 50 bucks, it's my gift to you, just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you wanna learn more about the pre-Sonus Studio One Beginner's Guide that'll not only cover tips like I'm gonna show you in this video today, but a whole host of different tips on how to get set up and navigate your way around Studio One so you're not frustrated when you're first starting. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a discount on that course as well as any other course on my website, so stick around. So here we are in Studio One. Here's the common theme. I see this all the time. I get asked about this all the time. And when you're new to using a DAW, whether it's Studio One or anything else, you just don't know. You feel silly when you ask me this question, but let me show you. So you have a track down here in green. You added a track. I called it voiceover. You want to record your vocal or your guitar. So you add a track. And then you start talking into, let's say, your voiceover mic like I am now. And you go, I don't see any signal. How come? I added a track. I don't understand. I got my microphone plugged into my channel, and I don't understand why I don't see, a, don't see any audio. And I don't see the record button. The record button's grayed out, Dave. How come? I can't get it to work. What's going on? When you first uh, set up your track, you need to make sure that you have your input selected for that track. If you look right above the fader here where it says main, this is our output, and then you see where it says none. If you left click on that, that is your input to that track. And you need to choose the input that you have physically plugged your microphone into on your interface. In my case, it's input one. And if I select that, and now I hit record, enable, you'll see that I'll see audio here. Okay, so you'll say, okay, now I see signal. I get it. I have to choose the input. If input one is the physical input on my interface, I choose the input, and now I see signal. This is great. So now, Dave, I want to start recording, and I want to start singing, and I can't tell how hot the level is. It looks like it might be a little hot. It's hard to read this little meter over here on the side. I can't see to um, how to adjust the gain, and they're using this meter, on, which is an output fader, by the way, to monitor their input audio signal. And although you can do that, it's not really the right way to do it. And there's an easier way to do it. So I want to show you that now. So I'm going to disable this and you'll see I don't see any um, signal anymore. But if I want to monitor my input signal going into Studio One, which you should do on every single track, it's an easy way to do it. If you come over here to the left side of the mixer or the console, there are some buttons here. See this button that says inputs? Click on that if you would. And now you'll see all the inputs that you have set up in the I.O. screen, which I'll show you in a second. And you'll see my voice in here coming on input one. This is the meter that you should be using to adjust your gain input on your audio interface. Okay, so as I'm speaking, you can see my voice here and you can see the numbers are much easier to read. It's a much larger meter. It's visually easier to see. This is the input, okay? This channel over here in green that we just got through talking about, that is the output. Okay, now you may say, well, how do I, where is this located? How do, how do you know, where, where did this get set up? This gets set up in your IO screen. So let me show you that quickly as well. If you're on a Mac, come up to the left-hand side of the screen here, click Studio One and go to Preferences. If you're on a PC, you wanna come all the way over to the right. I think it's next to the View menu. There's a, um, something called Studio One and then you come down to the track, that, to the menu that says Options. PC's a little different than Mac. But you're gonna get to this screen right here. I wanna click on the Audio Setup tab, come down to the left hand side where it says song setup. And now you have two tabs, inputs and outputs. If we go to our inputs, you'll see input one, and you'll see the little bit of audio coming in on input one. That is, uh, that's just mirroring what's happening down here in the console section. Now let's say I add, let's say I have a four channel interface and I want to add three more inputs. You can just click this add mono button, one, two, three. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you have the little mono M for track one, or input one, input two, input three, input four. If I hit apply, 
all these little M's will light up. And now you'll see there's four inputs, right? If I just click OK and close this box, look what happens down here. Right next to the input one, we have input two, input three, input four. So now if you have, let's say, a vocal on input one, and let's say in a guitar on input two, you would see the signal here as well. And you can use your trim pot on your interface to adjust the signal. If you want to change the names of this to say, I don't want it to say input one, I want it to say, you know, vocal on channel one, just double click in here. You can change it here. And let's say you want to have guitar always on channel two. You can double click and you can change it there, or you can come back to the preferences window, audio setup, song setup, and now you can double click in here and I can say, and I could, did I change it there? Yes. Uh, I could change it there as well if I want to. And if I hit apply, look what happens down here next to the mixer, it changes it there as well. If I want to change the colors of those so I can more easily see them while I'm performing and engineering at the same time. Over here in the I.O. screen, see where it says vocal, the little gray box next to it? If I just left click on that, guess what? A color box comes up and I can change that to purple. And if I want to change the guitar to yellow, I can change that as well. Now, nothing is going to take place in the console down here at the bottom until I hit apply. And now I hit OK. And look, now I've changed the colors. Okay, so I know that's simple, but it really is nice when you're actually the, the musician performing and the engineer to have some visual cues and things to look at very quickly so you can see how you're doing on your recording levels, you can see what track you're on, and your eye can easily go to where you need it to go to. So that is a real simple thing. Now, last thing I'm going to show you, again, you can also take this thing and you can left click and drag. So if you only want to look at the first two, you just drag over your mixer if you just want to look at the first two. Or if you want to look at all the inputs, you can drag this over here. The other thing that people don't realize, let's say you're using some external hardware with your audio interface and you're going to route, let's say your vocal is going to go out your interface through a compressor and then come back into Studio One. Well, on the physical outputs of your audio interface, you can actually see the audio signal of the outputs as well. If you click on this little button down here under inputs and click outputs, look what happens on the far right hand side. I now have all the outputs that were created in my IO here as well. And if you want to see that, if you come up to Studio One and go back to preferences and go to audio setup and song setup. And if you go on the outputs tab here, you'll see I have three different outputs here. That represents what's happening here down here in the mixer view or the console view, which is really nice. And again, if I want to change the color, I can just change the color like this. I could change them to all different colors if I want to by left clicking on the little box and choosing my color, hit apply. Now look what happens down here in the console view all the outputs have changed as well. So just by using these buttons, you can view the outputs, you can open and close that pane down there on the right hand side of the console, you can see me opening and closing. You could do the same thing with the inputs on the left hand side. And that is how you should be monitoring your input signal going into your interface and the output is using the inputs and the output buttons and not relying on this fader button when you enable record. Remember, this track is an output fader, not an input fader, okay? So I hope that little tip was helpful. Now, like I said, I got uh, many, many more tips just like this to help show you how to navigate through Studio One and all the little tips and tricks to make things much easier. Check out the PreSona Studio One Beginner's Guide at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Again, all the links will be in the description box below. So you stuck around till the end of the video. Like I said, go get the free mixing course at Home Recording Made Easy. It's a $50 course. It's my gift to you just for visiting Home Recording Made Easy. Go get it today. If you want to check out the PreSonus Beginner's Guide or any one of my other Studio One training courses, or for that matter, any other training course on my website, any of the paid training courses, I want to give you a 25% discount. If you use the coupon code YouTube25, that will take 25% off any one of my training courses on my website. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was helpful. Let me know below if you want to know about any other Studio One tips, and I'd be glad to show them to you. And until the next video, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com, and I'll see you guys really soon. Take care, everybody.